Hey everybody, I just wanted to share with you something that I think is pretty interesting, my, my students have found pretty neat, um, and that it seems they are using uh, enough to make it worth the time that it takes, and it's really not a lot of time uh, day to day. Uh, it takes a little bit of work up front, which is what I'm going to show you how to do, um, but after that uh, it's really cool. What, what we can do is save a, P, um, uh, a flip chart as a PDF. We can save that PDF uh, in a place that's online, that's in the cloud, that students can access and uh, see anywhere they have internet access. So um, first I'll show you how to make the PDF, which is really cool. You can just from there uh, email it as an attachment. You can print it out. And if you're like me, and you you know you write all over these P these uh, flip charts, you know you make a flip chart, you write all over it. I don't really want to save those flip charts with all the writing. You know it's just kind of a duplicate of what I started with, only with writing all over it. Um, and I'll hardly ever go back to that specific flip chart with that writing and do anything with it and it's just space on my hard drive I don't want to take up so um, what I do is save it as a PDF and it just serves as a record of what we did that day you can just go back and see everything that you wrote down how you explained it students can go back and see it uh, and it's mainly that that record piece that I use to uh, um, share with students so I'll take that PDF and I'll show you how to create a box.com account save PDF uh, files to your box.com account in a way that students can access it really easily. Um, so I'll, I'll show you first how to make that PDF. That's the, the, the middle piece there. Um, so just go to print. And just a, a couple things um, that this is like the eighth time I'm making this video and, and I'm remembering different things uh, that I already had set up that are ready for me to, to um, you know, those options are saved for me every time. Make sure that you have landscape because flip charts are kind of in a landscape uh, uh, setup and not a, a portrait. Uh, you know, if you do that, your flip charts are going to be just this tiny piece of, uh, of that page. So put it in landscape so it takes up a, a more efficient uh, part of that PDF page. And then make sure you click on color. This piece, once you see it and are trying to do it, you might actually go and save it as color and then it you go to open it and it's grayscale and for some reason I just have had to save the PDF two or three times and make sure I keep clicking color and and uh, and portrait um, or uh, landscape um, and and keep selecting those those and, and resaving the PDF until it finally kind of uh, locks in and those options will stay uh, from then on and you don't have to worry about it anymore and then if you want any of these options uh, you can do that. If, you, if you're one who does page notes over on the side uh, in, in your browser, uh, you could have it include those things. So the, all those different options, but my main one is just make sure it's in color because I use all the different colors and, uh, and make sure you're in landscape. So anyway, here we go. We export to PDF from the print menu. And this is what it looks like for me. You know, all this work with the box.com stuff is done so that when I go into my documents, I see a my box files. And once you're done, you'll have a file that links to your box.com account and syncs to the web uh, automatically, which is super neat. So I've created a file called uh, um, Promethean stuff. I'm just going to save over this, uh, this file that I've already saved many times, uh, and it's going to be a PDF of this flip chart that I've made. So I'm going to save, and I'm going to say, yeah, overwrite that file. Um, and then, so what we're going to do, we have a few steps to go through to make that uh, process easy for you. Let me just show you, when I, when I save that uh, to that, that file, what that does automatically, I'll show you an example of, uh, of what it looks like for a student, say, in Algebra 2. If that was an Algebra 2 flip chart, they would just click on this. It would come to my box.com account. They would open, say, Chapter 3. They can open something that we did the other day just recently this part is why I like box.com it gives you a preview of what you did that day so or, or a preview of the file if it's a word file or if it's whatever it just shows it to you right there and then you can download it from there so that's what it looks like to the student um, once I've, I've saved that file and it's on box.com and so that five seconds it is right there and they can see it um, so Let's come over here. We've got a few steps to go through. We got to create that box.com account. Um, create a public folder. Okay, the public folder is that Promethean stuff folder that you saw, um, and one that's public and you can access. 
uh, you need to download their application, the BoxSync application. I'll show you how to do that. And then step four, you just saw me do, saving PDF to your shared folder, your public folder. So uh, first, we'll go to box.com. Of course, this is left over from me doing this before. I'm just going to sign out. And um, I'm going to show you. You can sign up for a, a new account. There's a free option. Go down to the bottom and, and sign up. And just a side note, a, a teacher told me that they they went to this website, box.com. They went to sign up, and they didn't see a free account. And it turns out, it, it seems, that it was because they were viewing it in Internet Explorer. So try Chrome, try Firefox, uh, Opera, uh, whatever browser you want. Uh, so just click on Sign Up Now. Um, make sure you sign up for the free account. Uh, all you need to know is your name, uh, also your last name, your email, password, all that kind of stuff, and, and you'll be ready to go. So I've done that, and I'll log in. Um, and there's that Promethean stuff folder. So it's easy enough to create a new folder, right? You just new, new folder. You tell it what the name is. You keep it private, or you can invite people, uh, and so on and so on. I've created a folder. Uh, I actually did this from uh, the desktop application in the My Folders, or My Documents folder. Um, and if you want to make it public so that people can access it, you just click on that down arrow, click on Share, and you get the link to the folder. So there's this web address that is uh, uniquely dedicated to this particular folder in your Box.com account. And uh, I'm just going to copy that, uh, that address, and that's the address that will be in the email uh, that you can access that PDF that you saw. Um, so now it's shared, it's public, and there's a, a link, and, and I can paste that link. And I've taken those links, and I've put them into these pictures uh, that students can click on and, and go to that stuff that I just showed you. Okay, So we have the box.com account. Um, another use, just a side note, is, is there's a student who's gone right now and I can share things with him uh, as he's away, tests and quizzes and things like that. So uh, that's how I'm handling that. If you have him as a student, uh, you might want to consider that. Um, so now what's left to do, we have the box.com uh, account. Now we need to download the application, the BoxSync application. It's kind of a weird place. Um, click on this gears, the universal symbol for settings. And we click on account settings. We go over to mobile and sync, and there's the box sync application. So we click on that. Um, it looks different for every browser, but for me, when I click on a, a, a download, it, no, now it's done it twice. Uh, it comes down here uh, to the bottom window for Firefox. I think it, it still opens up a, a little window. I think Internet Explorer starts to do that as well. But uh, in any case, you, you find where it is, you click on it, you click run. I won't do that because it'll confuse my computer because it's already on there. Um, but you download that. It's real easy. I think you can even change where it goes to. Um, it will automatically, by default, put in um, uh, the, the My Box files uh, into your My Documents folder but you can change it to some other folder if you want to do that and if all that was Greek then just ignore it and just install the application and know that it will be in your My Documents folder. Um, so once that's downloaded, once you're done with that, that's it. You're, you're done. You're ready to go. Um, what that did was, if I were to again as an example go to print and export to PDF, downloading that application has, once I go to My Documents, has put my box files folder in here. You can also see there's one for Google Drive, there's one for Dropbox. They they all have uh, those syncing applications these days. Um, so that's what downloading the application did. It put that folder in there. You're ready to go, and uh, and you can just start saving your flip charts as PDFs and sharing them with your students. If you have any questions, just uh, let me know. Thanks for watching.